All right, before we get rolling, let's just delete these top two layers that we had added in in our last lesson. And let's just position our time bar right about there. I think that's a good frame to be on. We're gonna get in and mask out this BMX biker right here. Now we have two ways that we can utilize masking inside of After Effects. The one set of tools I call the uniform masking tools and then we have the pen tool or a non-uniform masking tool. Now what do I mean by uniform versus non-uniform? Well if we head on up to the rectangular tool drop down menu, I'm just going to click on it and hold it, you'll see that we have some quote unquote uniform tools that we can use being a rectangle tool, the rounded rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, the polygon tool, and the star tool. These tools make specific shapes that you can get in and create masks with. Now the one thing that I want to make sure that I do before I get in and utilize these tools is to select the layer that I want to mask because if I don't what's going to happen is, and I'll just pick the star tool just as an example, if I get in and start drawing with the star tool and I don't have a layer selected, After Effects will assume that I want to create a new shape layer with whatever the masking tool is that I'm currently using. Now I don't want to do that, so what I'm going to do is just select the layer that I want to mask before I do it, and now I can get in and mask out using the uniform mask tool the area of the shot that I want to see. Now with masking comes another very important parameter that I want to point out. I'm going to come right down here to the toggle transparency grid option. Now because I don't have another layer behind this one, this area in the black is actually transparent, but After Effects is not showing it to me. Keep in mind, anytime you do a mask and you don't have a layer behind it, anything that's outside of the masked area will be transparent and the transparency grid will show me that. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you know anytime you see this transparency grid, that represents something that can be seen through. And we can utilize this element as a matte key now in a nonlinear editing application if we wanted to. Now because our BMX biker is a bit of an odd shape, the pen tool is really what we want to get in and utilize. Now we did talk about clip-based parameters in the last lesson. I want to show you another shortcut once you've added a mask to get access to this mask if necessary. I'm just going to, much like I did before, twirl everything up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that layer. And if I'd like to get in and just select the mask itself, I'm going to press M on the keyboard. Now you'll see that what I can do is I can select that mask and you'll now see as soon as I do that all the vertices become active and I could now take this mask and move it anywhere in the frame that I want it to go. If I only had one vertex selected you'll see we're now adjusting this shape from a uniform shape to a non-uniform shape. Now the one other shortcut that I want to show you is the feather tool. I can select the clip again press F on the keyboard and what the feather tool is going to do is it's going to give me a soft edged mask. Okay, so keep those two keyboard shortcuts in the back of your head, M for mask, F for feather. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this mask because really the tool that we should be using for the task that we want to do is the non-uniform mask tool or the pen tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up and I'm going to select the pen tool and now I'm going to come in and just draw a shape around our BMX biker like this. And once I'm done you'll now see that he's been cut out and we only see him and we don't see any extraneous information that we were seeing when we were using that star shape mask tool. Now you'll notice this is a very linear or a very hard edged mask. If I wanted to get in and to create a bezier curve, meaning a curved edge mask, what we could do is I'm just going to select the mask again and hit delete. And what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to click and I'm going to hold and I'm going to drag the vertex of each mask point out to create some bezier handles. Now what does this mean for us when we're done? What this gives us the ability to do with each vertex that we add is it gives us the ability to step in and actually adjust its curve. Now what I'm going to do for the purpose of showing this to you is I'm just going to turn off the transparency grid because it's just a little bit easier to see with it turned off. I'm also going to press V on the keyboard to get the selection tool back up. Now you'll notice that once I hit V on the keyboard, the selection tool has that little icon beside it representing that we're dealing with a mask. I'm just going to select one of the vertices here and I'm just going to drag the one side of it out and you'll see how we can now get in and adjust both sides of the curve 
to really get in and start creating the type of shape that we want to create. Now, I wanted to get in in this course and show you a little bit of masking because you're going to see in an upcoming lesson, as I mentioned before, how we're going to utilize the masking information from a mask layer just like this to drive animation. And it's a very powerful and it's almost like a hidden feature inside of After Effects that if you know how to use it, you can create some very cool and very organic looking animations. All right, I'd like to move on now and talk about the pan behind tool. It's not a tool that's readily apparent what it actually does at its first look, but when you see how you can work with it and how it's going to save you a whole bunch of steps when doing a very specific function, you're going to be going back to it over and over again. So let's talk about it right now.